Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome back to Ten Pines Bluff. So, got a couple of builds together in one video for you here, as they didn't really fit a, as the standalone builds, so we're going to make a big bit of progress today. I'm sure the first thing you'll notice, however, is that we have no game audio. The reason for that being that I uh, mucked it up, to be honest. I've just transferred over to using a capture card to record directly onto the PC, and it's uh, taking a little getting used to, so... It is what it is, we'll have to uh, listen to some chilled out tunes while we uh, put this thing together. So, a couple of things we're going to do today. First one is a sort of canteen, mess, bar and uh, bunkhouse, I suppose, all rolled into one. Not the most stimulating build in the world, but important given the uh, sort of lore and backstory to the build. So, we're going to put it here in the space we've got left. And first thing we're going to try to do, line up these floor pieces. I'm using the carpeted ones just to make it feel a little bit more comfortable. Give it a little bit more character. I've got a little bit of a gap down the back there because uh, uh, settlers and myself will need access around the back to move between the tower in the corner there and halfway along the wall, so... I've adjusted that to fit accordingly. We'll get some walls on this thing. So I've put the tile floors down at that far end because that's where the sort of uh, dining room and kitchen, for want of a better way of putting it, is going to be. So it also differentiates the two, half of the two halves of the lower floor out a little better as well. I suppose the internal walls will do, but it's a different room, different function, so there we go. In principle, relatively simple build, though I did have a few issues with getting things to play nice. Snapping a few walls in here. You'll see in a moment, however, things stop cooperating. Just stick this corner one on. There we go. So this backside, for some weird reason, the middle pieces went in just fine, but these corner ones don't. They'll snap on sideways, but they won't go around the corner, which I've still not figured out why, but it is what it is. So I end up using a group select to get uh, wall pieces in there in just a little bit. Which we'll take a look at when I actually get to that stage. I did think that possibly putting the upper floor on at this stage might give it a, a guide or something to snap to, but no joy, unfortunately. However, we're going to do it eventually anyway, so it's not exactly a problem. It makes it easier for me to see what I'm doing when I line things up. There we go, still not playing ball. So. I'll close up these end pieces. I'm going to use the metal pieces rather than the wood just to break things up a little bit. Bit of build order issue there. Got to take the door off before you snap that one on. And we'll start putting the top level together. So I've tried to move through this reasonably quickly because we're covering quite a lot and most of it's relatively basic snapping. It's more of a uh, what I'm thinking exercise than anything else. And uh, yeah, as I say, we've got quite a lot to cover, so... For some reason those stairs will snap to sort of below a floor piece just fine, but they won't snap to the bottom. Or well, floors won't snap to the bottom, and the bottom won't snap to floors, which is a bit strange, but... It is what it is, so groups like to get this one in. A bit awkward to see what you're doing, though. So it's a case of trying to get a little bit above it. And there we go. We have access to the upper floor. That's going to change and get a little bit more interesting in a bit, but we'll come back to that. For now, stick a few walls in, mix and, max, mix and match those textures. I think given how often I say that, I'd actually be able to uh, get the words out, but apparently not. <laughs> so I wanted to use the sort of slanted angled walls there, just to break things up make it look a little different. But I end up coming back and changing it in a minute, so... I'll slap a roof on, using the slightly steeper one because it's a little bit more visible from the ground and it fits with the lean on the walls a little better. So, had a look at that, not keen on it. I tried a few different bits and pieces. Used um, the double length wall and roof piece, similar to this but twice the size that's added by USA. Unfortunately, it's not quite the right size, so it's left with some ridiculous looking gaps. And I wasn't really happy with it, so. We'll just mix and match again. Some of these uh, ordinary ones that will snap, and the thing looks considerably better. It gives us a little bit more room inside for beds and people to move around and what have you. So there we go. 
fairly basic, not the most elegant structure in the world, but it's functional. So I'm going to put a little balcony on here, which actually, the balcony's come to cause a little bit of a problem on down the line, which we'll get to in a moment. For now, I'm just going to line it up using the highlight there. At this stage, I've still got to uh, scrap that settlement switched on, so I'm using the conduit at the back there just to get a bit of extra reach because the, the ground's being awkward with sinking the pillar in. So I decided at this stage I wanted to make that back wall a little bit more interesting, so we're going to use these feature walls that are added by USO under the retexture section. And we'll use that ashtray just to group select them in. Position it on the top of the uh, little ridge here because it's the flattest bit of ground I've got. Line everything up, and there we go. Nice and easy. So, onto the internal walls. I decided I wanted access between the two, so we're going to put a doorway on here. These are also USO added pieces. Are they? No, they're not, actually. Yes, they are. <laughs> actually, look at the video, might help. There's a few similar pieces added by other mods that uh, remembering which ones are which is a, a challenge sometimes, as the, the list's getting reasonably long. It's, there's a link to it down in the description if you're curious, by the way. So I'm just going to get these lined up with the uh, change in the floor there. So a little bit fiddly to do, just to see what you're doing. Just because it looks fine on one side doesn't necessarily mean it is on the other, so moving backwards and forwards around is rather necessary to make sure everything's lined up properly. There we go. Neat tidy. So structure in place, we need to give it a little bit of support. Now these particular pieces are originally from Hangman's Alley, that uh, shack in the corner that's a little weird. But as you can see, they snap deep into the ground, so as I said with the drumlin build, the thing to do is make sure you position them in a place where you can actually see them sticking out the ground. So Then we're going to use this slightly taller pillar, which is a, a warehouse piece originally, just to get that little bit extra reach so we can get the bottom of the pillar below the level of the uh, support there. And then we group select it in. Unfortunately, with the top edge being a little angled, it can be a little awkward to get them into place so they look like they're properly connected to the floor. So it's something to bear in mind when you're positioning them in. Plus the collision doesn't uh, exactly play nice with them all the time. So I'll grab this one and repeat. Something we're going to repeat it all the way around, but I'll just show you this one and a little bit of the next one. Unfortunately, the pillar has to be reasonably close to use the group select, or closer than it does for some pieces anyway, but again, it's worth bearing in mind to keep it as, as far away as possible so that you've got uh, fewer collision issues with the pillar itself. Here we're just going to try and make sure that where the uh, supports overlap, they're poking through gaps rather than sort of clipping through each other. And get some supports in place for the stairway and the floor pieces at the top and the balcony around the other side as well. So we'll drop those into place, and this is where scrap that common, uh, scrap the settlement rather, got thoroughly awkward, so I turned it off, and you can see the result there. Not ideal. But we can now group select things much more easily, so we'll move these boards into place to support the floor piece down here, and we'll use the posts for the balconies and the upper level in a moment. One thing to note when you're putting boards underneath the stairs like this, make sure you don't push the top edge too high, or it'll start to interrupt the pathing up the staircase, which the player character will be able to work around fine, but NPCs will stop going up there very, very quickly if you're not careful. Surprisingly, the pathing's actually not that bad on this. So, we'll nudge this one in the hook to the corner, look at it from above, because it's much easier to see what we're doing. There we go. And same around the other end. Got that lined up, drop it a little bit down, there we go. Sorted. I actually turned them around so that the uh, thinner edges were facing outwards. You can see they're not quite perfect squares. Just because it gives it a little bit more room to get through the gap. Nice. 
So, on to the next thing, which is a little uh, greenhouse structure. So we're starting to run out of group select room here, so a little bit of caution is required. It's a fairly basic greenhouse. I did try and make it a little bit more interesting, but it didn't really work out. It ended up looking ridiculous rather than interesting, so keep it simple and it looks much better. So get the basic size in place, and then we'll group select it and nudge it back. These little dry stone walls here will disappear once I turn scrap that settlement back on. So I'll pretty much ignore those for now. And there we go, basic 3x3. Three three. Fills the space quite nicely and still leaves us room to get around it. Oh, I'll pull that centre one off and put a doorway in. Sorted. So this is where I decided to try and get a little creative, use a few different shapes, but the end result was, uh, yeah, not good, to say the least. We'll get the roofs on there. A little bit awkward to put things on that high, but we managed. Snap these angled corners in. There we go. Done, but yeah, I really didn't like the way that looks. Looks awful. So, take that tool section off. Stick some slightly angled roofs on. Keep it simple. Get rid of those, and then we'll stick a flat roof on the top as well. Nice. Worth noting that sometimes when you put these little rectangular windows in, as you can see like that, they end up going the wrong way round, so something to keep an eye on. And those tidied up, we have a greenhouse. Our Minutemen will actually be able to eat here now. <laughs> so, the last major thing, we're going to, at least for today anyway, is we're going to put the sort of walkways in that we've been leaning towards for a while. This is... Um, Something that would be very, very unique to any, whichever build you happen to be doing. Each, and individ each individual build will be different, obviously. So it's more of a thought exercise, I suppose, or mindset. We're going to start here and get this lined up, because obviously the ground being very uneven, you have to use a few different levels. So we're going to get that lined up along the edge of the greenhouse here. And you'll spot the problem already, I'm sure, but we'll fix that in just a moment. There we go, snap those on. You can see the steps just here. It's a little bit too low. We won't be able to sink an extra set of steps in there, so we'll have to nudge it up a little bit higher. There we go. Now, quite obviously, we're not going to be able to get through that doorway now. So, we'll take out that middle section, stick some half ones in, or quarter pieces in, rather. And then we'll put a stairway in the gap here, which has been a little awkward, so... Bit of build order, pull that one out, turn it round, snap it back in again. Simple. And now we can actually get in and out of the thing. So moving up the hill here, the idea is to make sure that um, when I use steps, which obviously I'll have to do in just a moment to move up to the next level, uh, that it's got a solid base for the steps to s actually sit on. So, a little awkward to get some of these pieces to snap in when they go too deep into the ground. But the smaller pieces are a little more cooperative. It's a case of moving around, trying different angles and different pieces until they play nice, which those ones did eventually. Stick one in here just to fill the corner up. There we go. Drop the staircase back in again. Should have a counter for how many times I took that staircase out and put it back again, really. <laughs> so, where are we? Yes, the next level, we've got this floor piece snapped onto the original part of the walkway, back over by the gate. Just gives us that nice even bit of height a little bit further up. And that connects reasonably smoothly with the top of the hill here, which is where uh, Lucas Miller likes to hang out when he drops by. And we'll just tidy off the edges with a few steps to make sure the pathing's reasonably solid. 
There we go. I may well delete that fireplace. I'd imagine it'll still hang out there anyway. But I'll have to uh, come up with some other focal point for him, I think, because that doesn't really look right, quite right. So here, I'm having issues getting both steps in at the same time. But uh, not having one set or the other just means it doesn't work very smoothly. So a little bit of group select solves that problem. And there we go. Of course, because we're working on strange angles and strange uses of the pieces, we've got a few odd gaps like this. Obviously, we can't put a staircase there because because of the collision. So we're just going to drop the board in there, cover it up a little bit. That should look much neater and tidier. So, down to the bottom end by the uh, command post and the little brig there. As you can see, I've taken the balcony off the front of the brig. The reason being, I've got three balconies here now, or had three balconies, all of them at slightly different heights. Which made putting the walkway in really quite awkward, so... I'll take that one off and line up the main walkway and use that as a balcony for the brig. And we're going to get it the same height as the command post down here. So, group select, get it lined up neat with the foundation of the brick there. And then we'll just slide it over. And adjust the height so that it's on a level with these two floors that are attached to the front of the command post. There we go. And then just hold X. So the thing will move on the horizontal plane, but won't go up and down. And just move it back into place. Nice. And now we just snap together the next few pieces. Now with this one, I was having a bit of difficulty connecting the two together. But for some weird reason, that floor piece there seems to want to play, so that's what we'll go with. Sorted. Made the rest of the building much easier once that worked. So snap the rest of these in. See if we've already got a few more at the far end, the little ones, just to uh, round off the edge nice and neatly. And I'll put a new piece in here just to connect to the staircase. Doesn't quite connect, but we'll stick a railing on in a moment and that'll... Uh, Hide the slight error. The pathing's still fine, so. Staircase is on there. Now I've got stairs on the edge here, but the floors don't quite line up, and that little staircase at the back there is floating, so. Snap another board on there, and we have a connection. Nice. Plug up a few more gaps. Here we go. Unfortunately, that one won't work, but it does look much better that way. So I noticed here, as I was closing it up, that you need access to this back corner, which I'm not going to put a walkway in, by the way. I do like to have some bits of the sort of bare earth. Mixes things up a little bit more. So a little staircase to give us access down in the corner here. There's a little bit of an angle to it, just to get around the corner of the uh, command post there. There we go, just need one more at the bottom, tidy things up. And as that corner's floating, we'll need to drop a board in there just to cover that up. I'll drop a second one in, I think, around the side as well, but uh, haven't done that just yet. Possibly, anyway, we'll see how it looks. So, confined space, so rug glitch is necessary. So, I'll combine the rug and pillar, slot those in nice and easy. There we go. And just tidy up this little balcony. Now I really need a stair on the end just to close things off, but obviously if I snap that straight on it's going to be floating, so I'll rug glitch a board in because it doesn't really want to stick out that far. And there we go. That just leaves one last thing. At the front of the brig's looking a little flat and plain at the moment. So there's a guard post added by Aslam's Junk Wall pack. It just clips slightly through the ground, but not a problem here. Looks neat and tidy and gives a little bit of texture and 
slight bit more shape to the uh, front of the brig there. And there we go. So let's have a look. So I've not done a huge amount of decoration at this stage because doing all of this took a lot of time. We've got some plants in there. Give our uh, one settler something to do. Stop getting in the way. Bit of a mixture of stuff in here. And I've followed the lines of the field that was already here, the little uh, furrows and such on the ground. You see, access works just fine. A couple of water condensers. They're uh, modified versions added by USO that will place on land, unlike the base ones that would only place in water. As you can see, I've yet to furnish in here, but uh, we'll have that done in time for the tour. Got a few bits and pieces of decoration and a few tweaks to make before then. There we go. It's going to be a little compact in here, I think, but uh, I guess people are probably eating shifts or something. Take a look around here. As you can see, I've upgraded the staircase a little bit, just so that it meets the one on the right there. Just a case of group selecting in the slightly longer boards. Yeah, plenty of room in here. Carpet looks a little ratty, but that's kind of to be expected. Probably 200 years old after all. <laughs> So the stairs I've used are from the warehouse tab because they were much more cooperative about snapping into place. And then the little wooden shack stair there has been group selected in using the pillar as well just to uh, meet the bottom of the staircase. It's a little too short. There we go, access all the way around. Take a little look up here. Looking like a much more permanent fort now. So this gap just by the greenhouse and the brig there, I've got a plan to put a kind of toilet block, shower block in there, I think. I'd thought about just filling it with some chaff decoration, but it occurs to me they haven't got anywhere to uh, keep themselves clean and such like, so we have an available space, so I'll use it. And there we go. So... Thank you very much for watching, I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, you know what to do by now. And if you'd like to support the channel a little more directly, then please do consider becoming a sponsor over on YouTube Gaming. you can find the information down in the description. But for now, thank you very much, and I shall be speaking to you all very, very soon.